everyone, it's Tracy Lewin. And Peter Murray. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Peter. This is a very interesting subject, geopolitical risk. Well, this is, um, you know, geopolitical risk is a, is a big mover of markets because this is really, you know, the things, the, the great, the big macro things that are happening in the world that are affecting the world markets. And uh, my personal belief is there's some uh, the geopolitical factors that are going to um, have a major impact on potential Bitcoin price movements in the next few months going towards the end of the year. Because people are all asking, you know, you know, Bitcoin has been moving sideways for so long. And what is going to influence the price? And I think, you know, we've just passed the, the, the summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. Today is the 1st of September. Now, um, oh, by the way, Tracy, if you're living in South Africa, happy spring day. Well, actually, you, I'm not living in South Africa. I'm in Dubai. If you're living in, in the Northern <laughs> Hemisphere, they would say, um, you know, autumn is starting, but actually it's only starting on the 21st of September. <laughs> but um, uh, if, you, if, you were, if, you were, if you were in Johannesburg, I would have had to send you flowers. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> but the big thing is this is really the last week of the August holidays in Europe. Um, or the summer holidays, and next week for Monday, people are going to be back at work and, uh, you know, your fund managers are going to start looking at the markets and uh, they're going to start assessing these um, geopolitical risks mm -hmm. and what effect this could have on, on Bitcoin prices. So, yeah, let's kick into it and see what the things are that we should be looking at. Well, the breaking news is actually the fact that the Brazilian, uh, first Brazilian female president, Dilma, uh, Dilma Rousseff, has been thrown out of office. So she's been impeached. Yeah, I, I mean, this, this, this was coming. We've talked about this before. And, uh, you know, I know um, uh, we're going to discuss the BRICS, um, but uh, this is a serious problem for Brazil. Um, there's a big political crisis. They've, they've appointed an interim president, but I suppose they'll probably be forced to have an election soon. Yes. So, you know, even though they've just had the Olympics, well, this is yes. not going to, you know, that's certainly not going to, to, um, to help Brazil at all. Well, the thing, the thing is, uh, Brazil has been going through a lot of political turmoil, but also they've had the soccer, uh, the, the Football World Cup in 2014, and now they've had the Summer Olympics, which had a little bit of a good fuel, fuel factor in the country. I mean, the Olympics went down quite well, and uh, now all of a sudden it's back to reality, and reality is Brazil is sitting with a huge um, economic uh, downturn in commodity prices, um, and uh, a downturn in the economy, the real is you know, it's lost a lot of its value in the last uh, two years. Yes. And um, <clears throat> and the thing is, um, you know, now they've got the political problems of the, the president is being impeached, and um, there's no real glimmer of hope on the on the on the horizon. What are they going to do to fix the economy? You know, get um, corruption out of the political system, and things like this. And if we jump into uh, you know the next thing is is this. Brazil is the, the B in BRICS. Mm. So, you know, one and then one and one of the biggest economies in, in, in BRICS. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, the question is what next and how is this going to affect, um, you know, emerging market, um, perceived emerging market risk? Um, I think the currency is a problem and I think you'll see a lot of new Bitcoin adoption in Brazil. Yes, definitely. Well, we've actually seen quite a bit going on in Venezuela, and um, so, yeah, most definitely Brazil too. Well, the thing with Venezuela is, is, is their economy is in tatters, and um, yes. I saw a terrible, a terrible uh, news story uh, yesterday that, you know, people are actually starting to eat zoo animals because mm -hmm. they can't get food. Mm. So, yeah, this is horrible. The dire straits. Very much so. Okay, so uh, Brazil, the hangover after the Olympics. Well, yeah, this is what you've just been talking about, and there's another hangover coming, and that is, you know, the Olympics, they've spent 12 million, uh, 12 billion US dollars. Don't be much, I'm not sure what their budget was, but I know it's far over budget. And, uh, but the major thing is, we did a study a few years ago on the impact of Olympic Games and currencies. 
and usually a country's currency starts to decline between 9 and 18 months after the Olympic Games uh, because of this Olympic hangover. So we'll see if that holds true for Brazil, but um, we don't see um, the currency really having any major moves to the upside. And, there's definitely going to be some depression in the economy, we believe. Yes, absolutely. And um, the R in BRICS is Russia. There's elections coming up on the 18th of September. Well, the Russian elections seems to be a certain win for Putin, so at least that's stable. And I think, you know, the Russians are already, they, they, they're struggling as well a little bit. Um, lower oil prices have uh, taken away a bit of their shine in the economy. Um, but um, the Russian central bank is looking towards using Bitcoin and um, unless there's a big upheaval, I think the Russian um, elections will go down with that edge. But nevertheless, it's an event and an event that can, you know, be interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And you know, Russia... I see, I see one of Putin's big rivals, Khodorovsky, that was in prison for 10 years, is going to take part in these elections. So we'll see if that is, is what these popular, popularity still is. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. And I have to just say, in terms of Bitcoin and Russia, I mean, there's, they've, they've also been, um, you know, one minute they, they're wanting to ban it, they wanted to throw people into, into jail. Now they seem to be embracing blockchain technology. And certainly they, you know, there was actually even a, um, the first um, exchanges has also opened in Russia. So there's some, some change over there. It's called a change of heart. Yeah, change of heart. Okay, the I in BRICS is India, and they say this is an economy poised to grow. Apparently, they reckon it's going to grow about 7.5% in the next 2016-2017. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the shining light in BRICS at the moment, is, is India. And um, there's many people that are saying the Indian economy is going to overtake the Chinese economy in the next 20 years, certainly the Indian population is going to. Yes. But it is, India is growing. So this is, they, they are, like I said, uh, the, the shining stars, the BRICS at the moment, because mostly because the next one we're talking about, uh, China, has lost so much of its luster and um, are still facing um, a few problems that have to be resolved. Yes. Yes, um, China is devaluing the yuan and uh, seems to be quite a lot of uh, turmoil there as well with the economy. Absolutely. And South Africa has been in the news this week, I mean last week and this week. Uh, firstly, you know, junk status, is it going to happen in, in December? Um, the, RAND, the RAND rallied uh, just a while ago and, and now it's, it's, it's going the other way again because there's been some news uh, with regards to the finance minister. What are your thoughts on South Africa? Well, I think... Um I think uh, South Africa is definitely uh, uh, facing the possibility of a, of a downgrade in the, in the uh, government debt, especially now with, like you said, all this stuff happening. But the underlying problem is the South African economy needs a kickstart and it doesn't, it's not getting it because the old alpha of South African economy's commodity prices are still low. And um, as we know, a lot of South Africans are into uh, adopting Bitcoin as a hedge against possible rand uh, uh, devaluation. Yes. I'll stop you up on Bitcoin. And, um, yeah, that's just, uh, that, 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 so, so we, yeah, I think, I think South Africa is going to have a problem. I think, I think this, sooner rather than later, they will get to jump status because unless they have some major plan to stop this down with spiral, I'm not sure how it's going to stop. Mm. Um, but while we're talking about this, I, I mean, let's let's just look at a few other countries. I mean, uh, going back to China and the whole Asia, Asian region. Um, you know, in China also we have some other problems. We have this Chinese military expansion in the South China Sea. We've got North Korea building missiles and shooting it uh, towards Japan. You know, I'm mm. talking about geopolitical uncertainty. And uh, the other big question is that I haven't talked about is the Japanese economy. Yes. You know, uh, Japan still has the third largest economy in the world. They're starting trying to kickstart the economy as well. 
And interesting enough, they are in the forefront in Asia. I would say they're the top, um, uh, from a, especially from a government point of view, the top adopter of Bitcoin. Yes, they are. Yes. And then if you move over to, you know, and you go, go a little bit more west and you, you look at Europe, um, you know, Europe, Europe has, a, has, a, has a different problem. Firstly, you've got this, uh, you just had a, a problem in Turkey with this um, possible, with, with, a, with a coup, but also, you know, the, the migrants moving into Europe through Turkey and stuff like that. And I think the big thing in, in, in Europe is the migrant crisis. Mm. I, I, um, they say there's been the hundreds, the hundreds of thousands of people now uh, um, going to have to leave the Syrian city of, uh, of Mosul. Um, and uh, this will also be, you know, putting more uh, pressure on, on Europe. And um, if you look at the migrant figures, I think 300,000 new migrants into Germany in the next year. Yeah. So yes. this, is, this is all a problem. And then um, in France, in France have a big problem as well with the terrorism. And, um, you know, it's, it's good giving the tourism a knock. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, you know, um, I mean, we've been talking about actual, um, uh, um, I have uh, one, uh, one uh, part of a party I'm talking to that are looking to buy some um, apartments in Paris because prices are so depressed. Um, and, uh, you know, so terrorism is a, is a big problem for, for Europe. And also migrants in France. Um, the, this whole story of, between the French and the English border, there's... This camp in Calais, I think there's 7,000 migrants now living in the, what they call the jungle next to Calais, mm. trying to get into Britain. Correct. So, so this is the thing. And, uh, and then the French elections that are going to be coming up um, uh, in the next, um, in the future is, uh, I see old Sarkorsky is trying to make a return. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know he's, he's playing a, the migration card again. So that is that is the that is the thing. Um, in Germany, we have, like I said, all the all the things coming in, um, all the all the migrant uh, problems that that are happening. So we'll see what happens there. And then um, I think we're going to talk about the each be later on. So I'll leave that for now. But. Um, the, the sovereign debt crisis has not gone away yet. You know, when's the last time you had any news about Greece and Portugal and Spain and about the economies? Yeah. Those things are all going to come up in the forefront again now as people come back from summer holidays. They're going to um, look at this. And then, of course, if we go to our next slide, the big thing that happened in the summer time was Brexit. Correct. And uh, the impact on the on the British economy now. The guys are also saying, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things. It's too difficult to implement Brexit, and they might have another election or another referendum. And I think this is just all adding more and more uncertainty. And this is why the pound is taking a pounding. Yes, absolutely, yeah. it is. I mean, if you invested in Bitcoin earlier this year, uh, you were in pounds. You would have made. I think we, we calculated the other day in 2016, you would be up more than 60 percent. Yeah, huge Delta. amount. So, you know, this 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 is the thing about Britain, and then of course the big big uncertainty that's coming now for the rest of this year is the U.S. elections. Yeah, it's that's going to be a very interesting one. I mean, that's something that we're going to have to watch very closely. And you know, I think if Donald Trump should win, it's going to put so much uncertainty in the world. Um, uh, it, it's going to be very, very. Um, it's going to be. It, 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 it's it's going to be a lot of uncertainty, and that's why I'm thinking this year that you know, after people coming back in September, fund managers squaring their positions. Be careful of the old October, October stock market positions. Mm. You know, people have been um, um, looking at the markets and saying that you know there's a correction coming. Won't be surprised if this correction comes in October. This will all be bullish for Bitcoin prices. Mm. Um, one thing that I left out is that um, you know in Africa, um, Nigeria had, uh, has, has lost the Nigerian currency, has lost a huge amount of the value this year. The the the, the, the uh, worst performing currency in the world this year. 
um, is a, a Nigerian currency, and um, you know, so so everywhere there seems to be geopolitical risk. Everywhere, Peter. Yeah. Everywhere. So you know that Donald Trump has actually gone to uh, meet the Mexican president today. Actually, It'll be interesting he's to see. Lining up new construction workers for his wall. <laughs> yeah, another great wall of China, the Great Wall of Mexico. We'll see what happens with this. Yeah, definitely. And September's they are actually they are actually bookmakers having bets on whether the wall will be built or not. Yes. <laughs> and he has a whole lot of other things that are happening in September. Um, the EC, um, ECB Governing Council meets on the 8th of September and uh, they say uh, it, it faces a, a make or break bid to save its quantitative easing strategy. Yeah, you know, Tracy, the ECB, the reason why they have this is there's um, 320 billion um, euros of um, ECB bonds are maturing between 2017 and 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, they're basically sitting uh, with these limits, And but somebody has to repurchase these bonds. So if they have to repurchase them, they're going to have to do something. They actually have to, to, to get some legislation done to actually repurchase these um, bonds. Otherwise, they're going to just, um, you know, they're going to just expire. Mm. And then that, if they don't keep the quantitative easing program up, it's going to put a damper on the economy. This is what the guys are afraid of. Okay. Um, Interesting. And uh, the next Bank of England meeting is on the 15th of September, and they, they don't, uh, Bloomberg's actually uh, done a survey and say that uh, there's only 6.3% probability of a rate cut at that meeting. Um, I think the rate cut will not come because um, the Federal Reserve um, they actually guys betting that the Federal Reserve will start hiking rates rates from September. This is also if if we all of a sudden see the Fed starting to hike rates, this means that this whole interest rate party could be starting to be over and we could go into a series of rate to rate hikes which will um, they have to start raising interest rates at some point. Mm. And, and and you know they, they can't just keep stimulating, stimulating, stimulating with low interest rates. Yes. Um, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see this is gonna this, you'll see a, a, the correction that we're talking about. So October October is gonna be an interesting month because it's right after all of this happening now in late September the people taking positions then before the US elections. Mm. And if the Donald, if the Donald looks like he's going to win, what are you going to keep? I think people are going to short the stock market or yeah. at least get into cash. Yeah, that will be good for the US dollar in on the short term, but it will be it will be great for Bitcoin. Yes, absolutely. And then uh, the Bank of Japan, Japan um, will announce the results of its comprehensive review of its monetary policy on the 21st of September. It's the same day as the Fed uh, decision. Well, they said the Bank of Japan is going to cut rates. I'm not sure what that's going to happen. Mm. I think they will probably, they'll probably stay if the Fed looks at starting to rise rates. Yeah. And uh, on the 4th to the 5th of uh, this, actually it's this coming weekend, uh, China is hosting the G20 summit. Yes. It's another thing happening. Uh, yeah, that's the G20 summit will focus, like I said, on global growth and, and financial sector issues. Yeah. But what usually happens with these summits is um, a lot of the um, talk goes to, you know, current events. And I think they will talk a little bit about terrorism and the, the crisis in the world as well. Yes. It's not going to be just about finances and stuff like that. Mm. And um, officials from OPEC member countries are, are going to be meeting in Algeria from September 26 to 28. So interesting to see. Um, it says, yeah, um, cause to believe the threat to maintain output at current levels is more credible this time around. Yeah, I will see what happens with this because um, oil prices still has a major effect on, on the world economy and 
you know, um, the guys want to prepare production because, mm. uh, of course, tracking has, has thrown a, a spanner in their works, uh, OPEC, but, uh, you know, there's still a strong factor, a strong, a strong movement. Mm. Incredible. Okay, so, Peter, we are fast approaching to the end of 2016. Now, actually, you know what, this, this year has been, has just absolutely whizzed by, you know, being so busy, so much going on with Bitcoin, so many exciting new developments. So, so where is Bitcoin actually headed? Where is it going? Is it going well, before, up? Is it going down? Before we ask, before we ask that question, is I've got another question that I want to ask, and, and this is the thing is, you know, what are rich people doing? What's, mm. the, what's the smart money doing? Now, you know, the two big things that we've seen is this year, gold is up 26%. Uh, silver is up 37%. Um, and uh, there's a big, the, the, uh, there's a big storage in, in Singapore called, uh, uh, where they store all kinds of precious metals and stuff like that, and uh, their capacity is up 90. Uh, the, the, the usage is up 90 percent in the last year, where people are storing all kinds of of gold coins and gold mm, storage incredible. and stuff like that. Um, gold ETF holdings is up 40 percent, and silver ETF holdings is up 10 percent. Mm. So, so you you're asking, are people afraid of of what's happening going to happen in the in, in the, the second or the last three months of this year, absolutely. And uh, the best way for people to, to cover that risk, in my view, is to get involved in the digital economy. Yes, Bitcoin. definitely. Well, the one good thing about Bitcoin is that you, 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 you can actually carry it with you, unlike uh, gold and silver. Yes, yes, absolutely. You don't have to we'll keep it in a, in a warehouse in Singapore. Yeah, actually, you know, there's a there's a there's a new, very safe, uh, very very uh, old-fashioned way. Keep it in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you go to the link below this video, you'll be able to see how you can keep your Bitcoin in your pocket, safe from all these geopolitical risks. Um, um, but most <laughs> importantly, safe from online hackers and um, under your own control. That's fantastic. I mean, that's where I want uh, my Bitcoin to be. That's for sure. Yeah, my Bitcoins are yeah in my pocket with me. Mm. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic, Tracy. Well, Peter, this is this has really been very interesting. This chat, I have to say, I've learned a lot. Oh, thank you very much. I've learned a lot as well, and um, I'm thanks for you know for putting all of this together. It's very interesting. Great, Peter. Thank you very much. And um, as always. Follow us on Facebook, uh, follow our YouTube channel, be informed, and um, everybody have a great day. And you too. Cheerio. Thank you. Bye.